Welcome. Oz Optics is pleased to announce a new addition to our line of distributed strain and temperature sensing systems. We now offer a system based on Brion Optical Time Domain Reflectometry, or BOTDR. This complements our existing line of products based on Brion Optical Time Domain Analysis, BOTDA. Both systems work by launching a pulse of light through one end of a fiber and then looking for a frequency shifted echo from points on the fiber. And by measuring that frequency of that echo from different points on the fiber, calculating the strain or temperature changes that are occurring within that fiber. The key difference between the two is that in the BOTDA system, we have a second laser launching light from the opposite end of the fiber. This is used to amplify that reflection that's being generated within the fiber. So what is the BOTDA advantages and disadvantages compared to the BOTDR systems? Well, with the BOTDA system, you do have amplification of the signal. So you get, you're getting a stronger signal back which is easier to measure. As a result, the BOTDA system is able to offer measurements over a longer sensing range, higher resolution, better strain and temperature sensitivity, and faster measurement readings. However, for it to work, it has to launch light through both ends of the fiber, which means you must have access to both ends of the fiber. In many cases, this is not possible. In many situations, you only have access to one end of the fiber to launch light through. So in order to make a Brion-based measurement with those type of fibers, we have to rely on the BOTDR method of sending just a pulse off and measuring the reflection. One other advantage of the BOTDR method is that should your fiber get broken, you can still make readings up to the point where the fiber has broken. With the BOTDA system, the laser light no longer can travel in the opposite direction through your fiber, and so you can no longer take readings. So the BOTDA system gives you better optical performance, but the BOTDR system can take measurements where in situations that the BOTDA cannot. That is why we have our BOTDR system right now. We're currently offering that in two different variant varieties. We have a standalone BOTDR system here. It's a dual channel system. So you have a fiber for one channel and the fiber for the other channel. In addition, we have a combination system offering both functions of BOTDA and BOTDR. So here we have an input and output end for one channel and an input and output in for the second channel. So if you're using this in BOTDA mode, you would hook up both ends of your fiber to the channel. But if you're using it in BOTDR mode, you only have to have the fiber connected to the start end. It is your choice, depending on your application, whether you want to use the BOTDR system, a BOTDA system, or a system that provides both. To demonstrate the functionality of both the BOTDA and the BOTDR system and compare it, we're going to do a demonstration using fiber and ice water to show the measurement of temperature in both modes. So to start, we're going to take our instrument set up the parameters for both BOTDA mode and BOTDR mode. Then we're going to take baseline readings for both modes, take our sensing fiber, put it in ice water, 
and then measure the change in temperature using both the BOTDA mode and the BOTDR mode of the instrument. That way we'll be able to see the difference between measurement using BOTDA mode and BOTDR mode. So let's start. So to begin with, we're going to start off selecting BOTDA mode. We bring up our setup menu. We're setting up our length at 2200 meters. We're going to be using a pulse width of 10 nanoseconds for both modes, which will give us a spatial resolution of about 1 meter. Our step size we're setting at 0.2 meters, so well under our spatial resolution of our measurement mode. And we're going to use frequency step sizes of just under 10 megahertz for making these measurements. We're going to be using the same parameters for pulse width, step size, start frequency, ending frequency, and step size for the frequency steps in both modes. The key difference we're going to make is on the number of samples we're going to use for averaging. In the BOTDA setup, because our signal strength is so much stronger, we only have to take 10,000 averages. In the BOTDR mode, because the signal is so much weaker, we have to take many more averages, and we're going to go to the maximum of 65,000 averages in our measurement. So once we have this set up, we go to measurement, and we take our initial baseline reading for this mode. And we start making our baseline recording. So now that, so now that we've got our baseline reading in BOTDA mode, we're going to go back here, disconnect our fiber here, And we're going to repeat our measurement using the BOTDR mode. So we enter the BOTDR mode. And from our setup screen, you can see 2,200 meters for the, for the length, 10 meters for our pulse width. Again, that's one meter spatial resolution. We're setting our spatial step size at 0.2 meters. And here's the key difference. We are now using 65,000 averages for this measurement, okay? That means that our measurement will take more time, but it's necessary because the signals are weaker in BOTDR mode. Everything else is the same, the frequency range, the step size. So once we have that set up, we go to measurement mode, select baseline, and start taking our readings. And as you can see, it will take somewhat longer here, about a minute longer, to make the same measurements. So now that we've taken the baseline readings you, in both the BOTDA and BOTDR modes, let's now cause a change of temperature to occur. So we'll take this section of the fiber, which is about five to six meters long, and we'll put this inside this insulated mug. And on top of that, we're going to pour over it this ice water. Now this is going to cool the uh, fiber down from a current room temperature, which is about 21 degrees or so, down to the freezing point of water, which is essentially zero degrees. Maybe 0.1 or 0.2 degrees above that freezing point. We'll give it a second or two to cool, and then we'll go back and take our readings using both the BOTDR method and the BOTDA method and compare the results. And now with the water added, we will make our measurement using the BOTDR setup. 
fairly straightforward. Just click, just make sure you're on strain temperature and start your recording just as through the normal process. Okay, it's almost finished gathering all the data. And once it's gathered all the data, of course, it's now going to start analyzing the data. And once we have that data up on the screen, we'll see if we can identify the change in the temperature. And sure enough, in the middle of our screen, we can see a small blip. So if we can zoom in on that section, there's our drop in temperature over the region. Okay. And in the middle here, the temperature is roughly uh, about 22 degrees uh, Celsius. There's a little bit of ripple here. This is the uncertainty of our measurement. Okay, but on average here, it's about within about a degree of the expected temperature difference between the room and the ice water. So now that we have this reading, I'm going to hook up the second fiber so that we can make the measurement using the BOTDA method and we'll compare the results. And now that we reconnected the second end of the fiber to our instrument, let's make the measurement now in BOTDA mode. So again, from our baseline that we've recorded earlier, we're going to select strain and temperature. And we're going to start the measurement process and then in a matter of a minute or so, we should have our results. So we've just about gathered up all the data. It's now performing the analysis. And once it's finished the analysis, we'll look again for that change in temperature caused by the ice water. So it's finished making the measurement. And if we look in the center here, there is our shift in the temperature. And if we click here in the middle, we've got a reading of 21.9 degrees. So again, 22 degrees change in temperature from the room temperature to the ice water in very close agreement uh, with our measurement that we made using BOTDR mode. Note how much smoother the whole curve is compared to the BOTDR our measurement, okay, but the overall results are in good agreement with one another. So now that we've demonstrated the two modes, okay, we've shown you the pros and cons, we hope that you uh, appreciate our video and uh, contact Oz Optics for any additional information. Thank you.